Didn't I just say I was done with TikTok? I'm too old for TikTok. It's not fun. In any event, Coming Up Fern, I guess you could call it a parenting uh, account, TikTok account run by a woman named Alice, showcasing, I guess, her child Fern, her baby Fern. Her bio just states autistic, vegan, holistic mother. But it's so much more than that. Before we get into things, this account is focused on Fern. He is in most of the TikToks. I have a big problem with family vlogging in general, with focusing on children. So I choose not to show my own kids on my channel or other people's kids, other YouTubers, TikTokers, kids, whatever. If you see any black bars or just there's, there's nothing there where video should be, that there was a baby there and I've, I've covered up the baby. One of the big issues with Alice's account is her views on vaccinations. She is strongly anti-vax and promotes a lot of misinformation. Baby Fern is without a doubt, absolutely, super duper, extremely, fully, completely vaccinated. Can't you see it in his eyes? And his little chubby rolls? One day I was thinking about how the $13 trillion pharmaceutical industry just isn't large enough. We aren't giving them enough. That was from her most recent video. This is a very common kind of conspiracy theory promoted by anti-vaxxers or vaccine hesitant, whatever you want to call them, that the pharmaceutical industry develops and promotes, heavily promotes vaccines in order to make a whole lot of money. And they do sell a lot of vaccines, but this is a drop in the bucket compared to other drugs. Which makes sense. For one thing, a vaccine is typically limited in terms of dose and how often people get it, right? One time, potentially, maybe two times at most, you've got the flu shot that you get once a year. Whereas other drugs like birth control, antidepressants, you take every single day. If they really only cared about money, why would they make vaccines at all? Why would they not just focus on other drugs? Or really, why focus on drugs at all when it seems like you can make tons of money on alternative medicine products? Virtually no oversight, no extensive testing that is incredibly expensive, and they can be sold directly to consumers online or in your local Whole Foods or whatever. The point is every single industry, every company is driven by profits. And this can be an issue particularly for the pharmaceutical industry. Tripling the cost of life-saving medication seemingly on a whim, not great. But on the other hand, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, all of these companies making all of the money <laughs> off of developing very quickly the COVID vaccine, the thing that will end the pandemic, the thing that has saved so many lives and will continue to save lives, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think they should be rewarded for that and for others to know that if they do something similar down the line, they will also be rewarded. And just a side note, she's not vaccinated for COVID, of course. My family and I have already had every single vaccine. We are at max capacity. But whether you agree with me or not on the issue of profiting off of vaccines or any other drugs does not matter to the core issue at hand, which is, are vaccines good or not? Are they worth it or not? How much money the pharmaceutical industry makes has no bearing on whether or not we should vaccinate ourselves and our children. The evidence is clear, including for COVID, that the benefits far outweigh the risk. It is one of the safest medical-related things that you can do. But it's not just vaccines. Alice is also pretty anti-birth control, the birth control pill. After we had Fern, I asked a group of traditional, natural, holistic, underground birth workers, the kind of people who would know the stuff, if there were any herbs that can be used as birth control, and they said no. The only herbs that are out there that could be used as birth control would make you permanently infertile. So if there is nothing in nature, no plant, that can prevent us from having babies, I can't imagine a man-made birth control that would be safe. That is just a fundamental misunderstanding of nature, of the human body, of everything. I think just everything. <laughs> Medicine that's man-made is often more potent, yes, but also safer because it's quality controlled and can be limited to the active ingredient. Just because something doesn't exist in nature doesn't tell us anything about what does exist and whether or not that thing is helpful or harmful. 
In the case of the pill, like most medication, it depends. There are certainly people for whom the pill does not make sense. It is dangerous for them. The benefits do not outweigh the risks. But then there are people like me for whom the benefits do outweigh the risk. This is what doctors are for, right? To help us figure out the right path for us. But for Alice, it's very simple. The pill is unnatural and so it's dangerous. It causes cancer, it causes autoimmune diseases, even infertility. So I'm going to quickly cover these one by one. In terms of cancer, again, it's complicated. The pill has a negative correlation with some types of cancer and a positive correlation with other types of cancer. Again, the benefits have to be weighed against the risks. For me, the benefit of having manageable periods far outweighs any risks, but for others, that may not be the case. In terms of autoimmune disease, it's also complicated. The pill has been linked to lupus, but for those taking newer, lower dose pills, the risk is virtually non-existent. Infertility, this one's not complicated at all. There's no evidence that the pill causes infertility. This huge review and meta-analysis found no association. On the other hand, interestingly, this study found that the pill might actually help speed things up. Not that any of this would matter to Alice, someone who thinks that none of the research can be trusted, basically. You don't need a study funded by the people who are trying to sell me a drug to tell me that a product that stops our number one biological function, reproduction, is probably not very safe. Anecdotally, I had no issue getting pregnant after the pill for both of my pregnancies. I stopped taking the pill and 30 or so days later got a positive pregnancy test. So again, it's just an anecdote, but maybe something like that matters more for Alice and others. I don't know. Alice is also very much against infant formula. She says in text, I wouldn't put the ingredients in myself. Why would I do it to a helpless baby? Implying the ingredients in infant formula are somehow dangerous. So let's have a look. This is the Similac soy formula. This is what we used with both of our kids. Corn syrup solids, sugar, not dangerous. Soy protein, it's isolated protein. I eat it all the time in smoothies and whatnot. <laughs> high oleic safflower oil, great for cooking at high temperatures. More sugar and more oil, both soy and coconut. And then a couple microalgaes for DHA, very cool. And micronutrients, most of which you would find in just a standard multivitamin. Then you've got some other like non-essential ones like taurine, L-carnitine, also things that you can take as an adult, very common in the kind of weightlifting, bodybuilding world. Hopefully one day the D3 in this formula and other formulas will be vegan. But other than that, this is stuff that myself and others, many others consume very regularly, even on a daily basis. And more importantly, there is no evidence that formula is bad for babies. But for Alice, who follows a different set of rules, I guess formula is dangerous, so dangerous, she thinks it should be illegal. Alice is also anti-sunscreen, shock of the century, I know. In answer to the question, why don't you use sunscreen on your baby? She says, because I want him to live a long and healthy life. I feel silly even dignifying that with an answer, <laughs> that which can be asserted without evidence, yada, yada, yada. In any event, there is no evidence that sunscreen shortens your lifespan. You know what could shorten your lifespan? Unprotected sun exposure. Just a thought. Finally, Alice is anti-medicine in general. <laughs> she doesn't believe in germ theory. Germ theory is not the only theory out there. If you look at other cultures throughout history, we are one of the only cultures who believe that sickness comes from germs that get passed between people. Most of allopathic doctors' med school is based on germ theory. If you read up on it, there are lots of compelling arguments against germ theory. Germ theory is kind of playing the victim. Germ theory victimizes humans. It puts us at a war with nature. It says humans are separate from nature. I personally don't like that. We are nature. She personally doesn't like it. I think that's what a lot of this comes down to. Vaccines feel scary. They feel yucky, so they're bad. Formula feels scary because it's man-made, so it's bad. There's not much to say really in response to I personally don't like something. It's like arguing with someone who says I personally don't like vanilla ice cream. Well, okay, that's 
sure, you can feel that way. <laughs> what do you say? She can feel however she wants about germs, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. It's just really hard to respond to someone who thinks that all of the the educated people are wrong about vaccines, are wrong about germs. Mom lets her baby eat sand and lick dirty shopping carts to boost his immune system. Practice what you preach. Why I let my exclusively breastfed baby eat sticks, rocks, sand, dirt, and unsanitized shopping carts. In the last couple hundred years, the allopathic industry has taken the world by storm. This did not happen by accident. It happened after a series of billion dollar campaigns intended to shift the public's perspective on health. I do not fear bacteria. In fact, I welcome it. I trust nature and my baby. It is not a coincidence babies have this instinct while they are breastfeeding. Choking to death on a rock is natural too, I guess. Seriously, if anyone ever asks you, coming up Fern, what's that? Just show them this video. I think it perfectly encapsulates Alice and her channel and what she believes. I trust nature, allopathic industry, billions of dollars, campaigns, eating sand. And yes, the baby is eating sand in the video, which is so funny because my two and a half year old was eating sand just like a week ago. I thought we were past the eating weird, random, gross things, but apparently not. In any event, there's a bunch of other, a bunch of other stuff. She's anti-GMOs, of course. I really did not want to cook tonight and just go to a restaurant instead, but the GMOs just aren't worth it. She has some really interesting thoughts on bed sharing, calling cribs baby jails, talking about C-sections as though they're the worst thing in the world. You know, I'm sure there's lots of other crazy. In addition to that, that I missed, she has a lot content, a lot of TikToks. There's only so much I could handle, especially given that it is TikTok. I, I just, I don't get the, the music and then there's dancing sometimes and it rarely ever goes with the topic. Sometimes it does. And it's like, oh, that's cool. They're talking about something that, and it relates to the lyrics. Okay, cool. But like she has a video where she's talking about bed sharing and SIDS and then she's lip syncing to Weezer. What? I'm just confused. Does that have anything to do with anything or just, I don't. <laughs> Point is, according to one article I read, she's only 22 and she does come across as very young, very arrogant. She's very confident, very assertive in what she says, even though she provides no evidence for it. Sunscreen is dangerous and will shorten my baby's lifespan. Anyway, moving on, she hasn't reached that level of maturity that allows us to go, yeah, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I actually don't know a lot of things. And you know, the people who have studied medicine, immunology, what have you, actually know way more about their field than I do. Who would have thunk it? Point is, hopefully she will outgrow this. Having this following, I think she's got almost half a million followers. I'm sure she will continue to grow until people get bored of it. You know, I think for a lot of people, it's like a, oh, look, what other crazy thing is she going to say, you know, but I think that could make it harder for her to move away from it because now this is a big thing for her, right? She has all these followers, probably going to make it harder for her to admit that she's been wrong and to change course. But yeah, a lot of you asked for me to talk about this um, and seem very worried. I'm a lot less worried about stuff like this, accounts like this, because it's just so over the top. The baby jails comment, the eating sand stuff. I think most people will see something like that and just nope, right out of there. <laughs> I suspect th the stuff that has more influence is the the smaller stuff, the more insidious stuff, the stuff that's coming from like normal people, right? It's someone you trust sharing a meme on Facebook about COVID causing infertility or something like that. I think that's the shit that sticks with people, but it's also the stuff that is probably easier to change. If you read about doctors who deal with vaccine hesitancy and are trying to encourage their patients to get vaccinated, whether it's for COVID or otherwise, they often talk about how most people are not anti-vax in the way that like Alice is. It's not part of their identity. Again, it's like they read one or two things somewhere that scared them and so they're not getting the COVID vaccine or they're delaying the MMR vaccine for their kids. And so these doctors say that often just having a short conversation with people, an honest conversation, treating them respectfully, right? Not as though you're this evil anti-vaxxer or something, but just having a conversation and addressing those fears and explaining why they're unfounded, but they understand why they would be scared, stuff like that, is enough to 
change people's minds and to make them realize, oh, okay, maybe the meme on Facebook is not a good source of information. Maybe my aunt Tilda in Michigan doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And I can still love her. She can still be my aunt Tilda from Michigan. I just don't get medical advice from her. Got it. Anyway, I just wanted to end that on a little positive note, but I hope you did enjoy this. I hope this was somewhat informative. If you did like it, give a like, consider hitting the bell, turning on your notifications, consider subscribing. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. And I will have a new video hopefully soon. Also briefly, I kind of maybe possibly started up my old movie channel again. Probably most of you don't even know that I have a movie channel, <laughs> but I have a movie channel that I used to post to very frequently. And then I stopped like six years ago. And then I just randomly posted something a few days ago and I might keep doing that. I don't know yet. I might do other things with it and might, maybe it's not just movie reviews. Maybe it's other stuff. I don't know, but uh, just thought I'd let you know.